Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. Tarzan Party is searching for Brian Gregory, a lost archaeologist. Atan Tom and Lal Tosk, who believe Tarzan to be Brian Gregory, are following. During Darno's recital of Tarzan's past, the expedition is endangered by stampeding elephants. Tarzan leads the elephants away from the encampment and returns riding the leader of the herd. After the other members of the party have gone to bed, Wolf apparently convinces Magra that she must steal the map of our share from Helen Gregory. Magra consents and cautiously enters Helen's tent. Helen. Helen. Hmm? What? Oh, why? Why, Magra? Why, what's the matter? Keep your voice low and listen. You have a map. What's that? How do you know? Wait, please. You have a map which shows the city of our share. You must not keep that paper or in your tent. Why, what do you know of the map? Who told you? Never mind who. It is enough that I know of it. And if I know, there may be others who know. You must give this map to Tarzan if you wish to preserve it. And keep yourself out of danger. What? Myself out of danger? Oh, why, who would want to harm me out here in the jungle? Please, Helen... Do as I say. But suppose I gave this map to Tarzan. Wouldn't that be placing him in this danger? Danger to Tarzan? Danger to a man who kills lions with a knife? Who makes elephants obey his commands? Well, I, I suppose you're right, but still I don't see... I ask you to trust me, Helen. You must give this map to Tarzan. Well, all right, have it your own way. I will. And you will give it to him in the presence of us all? Yes, I'll do that too, if you insist. One thing more. It is better I do not appear in this. You will not mention my name. Very well. It's all a deep mystery to me, but... But if it'll make you sleep easier, I'll do as you say. Now do go to bed. A strange, murky flavor hangs in the sultry air of the African night. The jungle seems to murmur and breathe its scented breath across the soft, dark world. Presently, over the sleeping camp, the night shadows melt into the early gray of daybreak, which in equatorial Africa is almost as short as the lighting of a candle. The patterned roof of the forest is etched in the timid green of dawn as the expedition once more gets underway. Wolf strides along beside Magra before taking up his post at the rear of the column. So, you missed again last night. Ah, what do you suppose I give you that knife for? I searched the tent. The map was not there. And the woman? Helen woke up when I went to her car to search her. Well, you had the knife. Why didn't you use it? And rouse the entire camp. Magra is no fool. And so we start all over again. Well, if the map wasn't in that tent, where is it? I do not know. But I am sure Helen is not carrying it. And it must be the old man. If he's got it, leave it to me. I will have that map before tomorrow morning. Now you... Hello there, Margaret. Wolf. Phew, this is hot. It's worse than Chicago in July. 
I can't get used to it. <laughs> That's not all you will have to get used to in the jungle, Mr. Beckley. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I admit this is all new to me, but I'm willing to learn. You will. <clears throat> well, I, I am going back where I belong. Some of these boys are inclined to lay down on the job. Margaret, you've been in the jungle before. Is it always necessary to break trail like this? It slows us up terribly. That depends on the region one is in. Near the equator, the vegetation is heavy like this. There are sections where it is unnecessary. Well, I hope we strike better going soon. I am anxious to get to this Tuanbaka country. By the way, how far do you go with us? My destination is also in the Tuanbaka Valley. In the rear of the column, Wolf barks guttural commands at the sweating bearers. He frowns darkly as his brain grapples with the problem of how to get the map from Helen's father. Exasperated, he drops to a seat on a great moss-covered limb beside the trail and wipes the sweat from his eyes with the back of a hairy hand. Behind him, a dry twig snaps. He whirls. Don't know better. Uh, what are you doing here, Tom? An unnecessary question, Wolf. You know why I am here. What have you and Margaret done about the map? Well, Margaret searched the girl's tent last night, and, but no luck. And you? Nothing. They watch me like a hawk. Mm, have you ever heard of Confucius Wolf? The Chinaman? Mm, what about him? <laughs> Confucius once said, Pekin has only one gate, but many roads lead to it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, I have tried. You to, are uh, a blundering uh, idiot, Wolf. I show you. I get that map tonight. No. You will listen to me now. And you will do exactly as I say. Well, what is it? Is there a medicine man, a witch doctor with these natives? Well, of course. With a crowd of bearers like we have, uh, there's always one. Oh. He is a valuable man to us, Wolf. What's the idea? Suppose with his influence he were to incite the bearers to desert your safari and join mine. Well, 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 but then... <laughs> I am indicating to you one of the roads leading to Pekin. Wolf, I want the Gregory party left alone and unprotected in the jungle. <laughs> river we're coming to, Tarzan. Do we cross? Tomorrow, yes. Uh, I've been to the river. It is full of crocodiles. Gimela won't attack us, but keep the natives away from the water. Yeah, fool. Seems to be some excitement among the natives. I hope we're not going to have another such experience as we had the uh, first night out. No, they're probably getting ready to hold a ceremony in honor of the river god. It's the usual thing. Yeah, that's nothing on a long safari. What kind of ceremony, Wolf? Oh, just what? They're heathen mumbo chumbos. It's supposed to drive the crocodiles away. I have seen it often, Mr. Gregory. It is interesting. Mm, another beautiful jungle night. After a square meal like that, anything looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even the boys. But look at them. What are they doing around the big fire? They seem to be putting on some sort of ceremonial garb. Look at that old fellow wearing the horn the headdress and prancing around like an Apache chief. That is the witch doctor, Monsieur Gregory. He has more influence with the natives of his tribe than even their head chief. Oh, yes, I know. Among our Indians at home, the medicine man is a very important person. In the jungle, the witch doctor is a sub-chief. But as Darno says, his influence is great. <laughs> The big fellow leading the dance. Isn't he the one you calmed down the other night? Yes. He looks terribly savage in that crocodile headdress and paint. You know, he acts as if he might go mad again. Have no fear, Mademoiselle Elaine. He is merely working himself up to the proper religious excitement. What's in that big kettle the witch doctor is making passes over? That's what they call her, the Miam Chai Chai. The voodoo fellow been fixing to put Tarzan's friend to sleep. What is this Bang Chai? Ah, a dirty mess. Cooked up from roots and herbs and the bark from the Potocarpus tree. It's rotten stuff and strong. You ever tasted it? Mm, yeah, her voice. Now, now, watch the medicine man and the big black. He will drink from the gourd the old man is holding his hands. And then he'll go to sleep and then the fireworks. When the big fellow falls down, the, the witch doctor will start working on him. 
You see that? He's down already. Yeah, that stuff is strong. Those drums, oh, so weird. They make my blood run cold. He doesn't even seem to feel it. He does not feel it, Mr. Gregory. Baka, that's it. What, Wolf? I'm going to get some of that stuff from the witch doctor and give it to the old man. <laughs> the rest will be easy. Hey, yeah, if this voodoo business been supposed to keep crocodiles away, it ain't much good tonight. Look there, crawling out of the water. The crocodile, in spite of their monkey business. A big fella, too. Just a minute, they get my gun and they fix it. Come back here, Arthur. Larson pays no attention to Darzan's warning. As the hunter approaches, the crocodile stops, faces the hunter. A bull-like roar issues from its wasp throat. To get closer and assure himself of a better aim in the dark, the Swede leaps over a boulder in his path. Alighting, he slips and falls. The rifle flies from his hands. His head strikes the stone. Dazed, he slumps to the ground. With a rush, the great Saurian, saw two jaws open and slavering, closes in on its helpless victim. In one lightning-like movement, Tarzan leaps to his feet and hurls himself to the... 